Now, starting to get in trouble time-wise. I know this video is running too long. I have a couple more things I want to talk about real, real fast, so I'm going to have to make them quick. First thing I'm going to talk about RGB flashers. Okay, I recently found that there was a new type of RGB on the market. Some of you probably say, that's not new. Well, it's new to me. All right. So I'm getting out an RGB flasher. This is the one I'm used to. I've got to reset my power supply. It's been reset away from what I had it there for. We're setting her to 2.6 volts. You can't, RGB flashers are around 2.6 volts. Okay. You set the voltage too low, you won't have all the colors flashing. Let me power this thing on. There we go. You guys can see the pattern going through it, right? It does a flash dance, fast dance, and then it's going to do a slow one. All right, let me cut that off. This is the one I was familiar with. I've got a little bag of these guys sitting right here. What is new to me is what is in this bag. Keeping the voltage the same on my power supply. We're going to plug this guy in and give him a whirl. Okay. Turn it on. Turn it your way. We have red, green, blue. The blue is a little weak. I got the voltage a little low for the blue. Back to red. This is a nice slow flasher. Okay. I can see a certain use for it. So I bought some. They weren't expensive. But I did find some slow flashers. So there's different kinds of RGB flashers out there. Alright. I want to let you guys know that. Another thing that's starting to become way more available than it was a year ago are flat top LEDs. Now, why do we care about flat top LEDs? Well, one reason I care about flat top LEDs is light. We got the voltage a little low for her, so let me fix her. There we go. One of the reasons I care about a flat top LED is the light pattern. Okay? We get a piece of white paper here. Yeah, that'll work. See how that light pattern is? See how it's spreading out the light? If I use a non flat top LED, and let's do that real quick so you guys can see one. You'll see that the light pattern is not the same as that. Okay? You'll see that light pattern is very narrow and focused. That's one of the problems with LEDs. Is Yes, I'm using an RGB, but you guys will be able to see that light pattern. You see how the light is not so spread out? It's more focused. One way to undo that focus, and you can really see it when it's going slow. One way to undo that focus is a lot of sanding and abrading your LED to change its shape. And to, Some people frost them. I don't frost them. I get a file to them and I just abuse the crud out of that LED. Change its shape to get rid of that focus of the LED. So the spotlight effect. LEDs have a spotlight effect. Whereas the flat tops won't have that spotlight. So that's why I like the flat tops. All right. And they are getting a lot more available these days, which is making me happy. So let's turn that on and show you what I mean. See, there's no real spot spotlight to it. Now, the ultimate in this non-spotlight effect, I'm pretty sure I've got one of those in my hands, is these Piranha LEDs. And these are fairly new on the market, too. Pardon me for a second, I have to find the positive pole on it because it's not like a normal LED with the positive end and a negative end. I have to look at them to see them. Okay, I got my positive hooked up. Got my negative, turning her on. There we go. There's the Piranha LED. And you notice, there is no LED spot effect. These are even better than the flat tops that spread that out. They're also a bit brighter than the flat tops. 
than the normal LEDs, just a little bit. Now you want to talk bright, let me get bright. What I have in this bag are some 10 millimeter LEDs, they're half watts. Okay? So let me get one of these babies out, let me plug her up to the power supply, click her on. They still have the spotlight effect, and I don't think it's that much brighter than the Piranha, but it's definitely brighter. Okay? I got a bunch of these guys coming, and I might use them with the A-Wing. We'll see. Because it is... You don't want to look at that. It's definitely brighter than the Piranha LED. Not a whole lot, but it is brighter. And that's a half-watt LED. These other ones are 20 milliwatts. This is 500 milliwatts. So it's definitely consuming more power and it is brighter. All right, this leads me into one last little thing I'm going to go over real quick. And that's the LED light strips. All right. You guys, oops, that voltage is not going to power that. You guys have seen these before. I know you have. There. You've seen these before. I did a review of them. All right, that's blue. What if I don't want blue? What if I want some other color? Okay, what I can do is this. Let me cut that off. And let me hook up something else. I'm gonna have to turn the lights on so I can see this properly. Old eyes need glasses. There we go, there's a positive end. I'm using the waterproof uh, light strips here. For a reason, they disperse light fairly well. Okay, and they don't do it quite as well as I'd like, but they do disperse light. We're going to talk about a way of fixing that in a minute, if you'd like. I had this guy lit up earlier, and I probably should have just left him and done the 555 separately. Let's see if that got him going. Nope. we have to do this all on live camera there we go I'm not gonna move that around too much I got that lit let's say I don't want white I don't want blue I don't want yellow I want some intermediate color that I just can't find lighting gels okay someone over at scale model addict sent me this sample of lighting gels and I haven't gotten around to using them but I'm going to okay this says cool blue. I'm going to put a lighting gel in there. I don't know if you guys can see that. Thunderpaws wants to help. Okay. Lighting cool blue just probably isn't the color I want. Let's say I want a deep dark red. I'm doing a Klingon engine on a bird of prey or something. Put a lighting gel in there and I'm going to get a deep dark red. All right. You guys can see how that's changing that color right there. I can't do too much with Thunderpaws here. If I start moving the camera around too much, he's going to be in on it. But you can see that it is definitely changing that color. Okay? I'm afraid that's going to go out. There we go. We can see it's changing the color. And, it, you know, you can just put a... These, these lighting gels come in many, many different colors. There's a lime green. Okay? You want to do your Bird of Prey from Romulan Base. There's a nice green there. You know, there's a nice deep blue they come in many many colors the happy thought with all these are I mean there's an orange or an amber the happy thought with all these are is they're readily available they're incredibly heat tolerant I mean, let's say you're building something for your girlfriend and you need some pink okay you can double up the layers let's say that pink isn't gonna cut it so I'm gonna mix it with another pink here so I can double up the layers and you can see I'm getting a better pink. Let's say that's not cutting it and you can add some red to it. So you can see how that would change the colors. They're readily available in almost any color you want. They're not incredibly expensive. I got a light gel pack off eBay. Let me cut some lights on here. 
I got a light gel pack off eBay for I think five dollars and it came with blue green yellow and red and it's 10 by 10 inches and it came with four colors okay now I didn't pay that much for it so I can change the color of some engines if I want now there's one more segment there's gonna be a fade out and then we're gonna get the next segment and I'm done with a little electronics update I need to get back to building models so I hope you enjoyed this next segment. It was filmed about a month ago. Okay? And I hope you enjoyed. Talk to you later. Hello, everyone. From time to time, I'm going to throw out a few teeny tiny updates to um, my electronics tutorial, my lighting tutorial. This is one of those updates. I don't know if I mentioned earlier, one of my viewers, .40K Orcs, suggested that you get your wall warts, the plug-in power supplies, at a place like Goodwill. They have lots and lots of them being turned in with devices all the time, so they just throw them in a box, 50 cents to a dollar a piece. That would be a great place to get them. I got a bunch off eBay. I bought a big box of like 20 of them for 20 bucks on eBay. Shipping was $15 because they're heavy. I should have went to Goodwill. No shipping. Tax minimal. I could have gotten everything I wanted. But anyhow, the other reason we're making this short little update is Model Man Tom sent me something for evaluation. They're kind of lighting up my desk down here. He, I bought a big light pack from him, so my earlier evaluation was not paid. It was not a gift. I did it on my own, so to speak. I wanted to see what these LED light strips were about, and he was offering me at a reasonable price. This is one of those LED light strips I got in that package. This is a waterproof version. The waterproof version does better at removing hot spots. In fact, I have to zoom in pretty good for you guys to see the individual LEDs. And my camera being what it is, doesn't like to focus on that too well. Alright? But you can still see there's hot spots on it. And a lot of the trickery right there is lack of focus by the camera. There, let's give it some light. Now it has no trouble focusing on whatever's in front of it. And you can see the individual LEDs very well with Mr. Camera. Alright? Now this isn't what Tom sent me. He sent me something different. Alright? And that would be this right here. Do you notice anything different between the two strips? Side by side here. Let me hold them both so I have a hand free to work the zoom on the camera. Alright? The main difference is you can definitely see the individual LEDs in this one. The individual LEDs are harder to see on this one. Okay, This is a side firing light strip. That means the LEDs are not pushing light straight out above them. They're pushing it off to the side and up somewhat. That's going to make the light disperse more. Okay, It's going to make fewer hot spots. So, this looks like a winner, far more than the double density. The only problem is, they're expensive. I don't know the exact price off the top of my head. Tom sent me his price guide on it. I forgot to look it up beforehand. I just know it's more expensive than this stuff. I'll put the price in the video description when I upload the video. Well, there you go. There's a short review of a new lighting product. I'm sure this will drop in price as it catches on with popularity and come out in multiple colors. I think Tom told me they would come out in different colors, but he just sent me this one right now. Alright? And yes, it, he has it labeled as side fire. Alright, well, there you go. New lighting product. Looks better than this for eliminating hot spots. Again, zooming in where you guys can see the difference very clearly. All right, so there you go. Just wanted to give you a short update. One short little segment I forgot to do. Um, Model Man Tom is now selling light packs. He, I don't know the different sizes on him. Just look up Modeler's brand. I'll put a link at the bottom of the video to his website. Okay, I think he's selling 1,500 LED packs with resistors and switches and other things thrown in. Starter packs for those who want to start lighting with various color LEDs in there and a few other things. So go check it out. Okay, I'm a small businessman and I like supporting small businessmen. He's built models and done lighting in them for a while, so he knows the stuff you guys need. Thanks. Bye. I wasn't paid for that. Don't think I was.